Okay, perfect. So yes, today I'm going to talk about this uh, this paper that was published in Nature last year, uh, and it's also about uh, uh, another proof that we have how important is heterogeneity in the, in the tumors and how this can affect actually metastasis formation. And before I start, uh, I would like actually to introduce who is behind the thing together with me and uh, that we did together this work and where we are. So it's, uh, this work was done in, in the lab of Professor Sara Maria Friend, uh, who is here, but also uh, in, in very close collaboration with our, actually our both co-author of the, of the paper with uh, Matteo Rossi here in this picture. And we are all in, indeed in Leuven, in this uh, wonderful city that if you have the opportunity to visit, it's, it's, it's super nice. And uh, yeah, now maybe I would like to uh, yeah, sorry, uh, start actually with a question. Why is it difficult to find a solution for cancer? Well, um, if to, um, actually it's, it's because this is a very dynamic disease. Cancer cells are constantly changing. And um, if, if you think about it, it's, it's, it's because the, 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 the disease uh, evolves during this. And we can see this actually pretty clear with a, an example of, of breast cancer. Breast cancer is, is the most common diagnosed uh, cancer worldwide and is the second reason of cancer-related death among women. And actually, the survival, when it's detected in the earliest stage, is it's, it's, uh, quite is more than 90%. However, when the cancer is in, in a, a, a more late stage, in a stage four, this survival decreases up to 22% only. And this is one of the reasons, actually, is it's because currently we are treating uh, the, the tumors as, as if they were all identical. But they, uh, they, then they evolve and the treatment become less efficient. And this is especially, especially uh, observed when the, the, the disease becomes metastatic. And why is that? How do they change during the, this progression of the disease? Well, the, the metastatic cascade is, is actually a very complex, uh, a, a complex multi-step process that starts when cells from a primary tumor this, uh, invade the surrounding tissues, uh, extravasate into the, the intravasate into the circulation, and go to different parts of the body to create uh, micrometastasis first, and then uh, colonize the organ. But uh, as I said, the, the, the cells during this evolution of the disease, they change a, a lot. And one of the things that uh, we study in the lab of Professor Fenn is actually how th these cells change the metabolism uh, over this cascade. And one of the reasons that they do it is basically because they face different environments and different concentration of nutrients, different uh, stimuli, different stress that they need uh, to confront and and for that, they adapt the metabolism. So in this project, actually, what we uh, focus is a bit in, in the cells that leave the primary tumor. Mm, we were wondering if, if, if they have a, a different metabolism, or they have a, a metabolic advantage that allows them to do this, uh, leave the primary tumor. So to, to check that, what we did is we look uh, for this intra, intra tumor heterogeneity that uh, Adria was telling earlier, because we wanted to find which a, 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 a signature or a feature that some cancer cells in the primary tumor, not all of them, have that allows them to do it. And here is actually an example of this uh, intratumor heterogeneity of one metabolic enzyme. As you can see that we did uh, in, in green is the staining of this metabolic enzyme, and in blue is, is DAPI of the nucleus of to localize all the cells. And you can see that uh, here we have areas where it's uh, really highly expressed, this area that is low expressed and it has areas that is really not expressed at all. So we, we were looking, then we want to, to check different metabolic enzymes and see which one had this type of patterns in order to find these metabolic features that could actually benefit for, for uh, the metastasis. So we, what we did is we used for that a, a patient-derived stenograph, so PDX from uh, breast primary tumors of triple negative breast cancer patients, which is the, the most aggressive uh, phenotype. And we did staining for different metabolic enzymes. Here I'm showing you some of them. And what we found is that actually most of them were homogeneously expressed. Here are some examples. However, we have uh, a, one, of, one of them that was heterogeneously expressed, and this is PHDDH. And this actually uh, got, got, was interesting for us because when we check the other enzyme of the pathway, uh, well, first of all, this is the uh, enzyme, the first step 
of the serine biosynthesis pathway coming from glucose. And when we check the other enzymes that are involved also in the pathway, so PSAT and PSPH, we saw that they actually, they actually had an opposite trend. They were homogeneously expressed, but PHDH was, uh, the expression was more heterogeneous. So we wonder why, and, and if actually this is an, an advantage for, for, for these cells for the metastasis. So uh, then what we uh, decide to do is first check if this heterogeneity was also present in, in patients. So for that, we, we took uh, uh, primary tumors from uh, this time from patients, uh, again, from triple negative uh, breast cancer patients, and with the same staining for PHDH. And with, we saw that, again, a, a portion of them, 33%, had this heterogeneous or low PHDH expression. And interestingly, when we look into the, the clinical, the follow-up uh, data of these patients, we could see that these patients that had low PHDH or heterogeneous in the primary tumor um, actually had also a worse prognosis. They have a, a, a significantly lower metastasis-free metastasis survival, but also lower disease-free survival, indicating that this heterogeneous PHDH expression could be indicative of, of metastasis. But um, what, are the, uh, what are the cells, this heterogeneous expression? It means that the cells have an advantage for migrate or disseminate better. And, and what are the cells actually that do it, the low PHDH or the high PHDH? So to study that, we use a, a technique that is called uh, intravital uh, time-lapse intravital microscopy that we can actually see how cancer cells behave inside in situ, inside of the primary tumor over time. And for that, what we did is we uh, mimic this heterogeneity in the primary tumor by injecting cells that express high PHDH, so control cells, together with cells that express no low PHDH or no PHDH at all. And we uh, have them with different fluorophores, so we could actually follow them in the primary tumor. So when the primary tumors were formed, uh, we did this, uh, this, this follow of the cells within the tumor. And here in the video that I have, you can see how cells that are labeled in green, which are the low PHDH cells, actually were uh, migrating more and more easily over time compared to the cells that are purple, which are the control cells. So indeed, it seems that these low PHD cells can uh, have an advantage for migration. But what happened when the cells leave actually the, the primary tumor and, and they enter into the circulation? How are they for PHDH expression? What we saw is that uh, these circulating tumor cells actually are low in PHDH expression compared to the, to the primary tumors, as you can see here also in this stain. And interestingly, this is also translated into more metastasis. So we could see that when we also check the, the, the lung of these uh, mice, primary tumors that have low PHDH can also um, develop more metastasis. So all this data was indicating uh, us that the loss of PHDH actually potentiates the migration, the dissemination, and the metastasis. But what is the mechanism behind? What is the advantage for these cells having uh, lost PhD, PHDH? So because, as I said, PHDH is a metabolic enzyme, we look into the metabolism of these cells. So we did a metabol metabolomics analysis measuring the metabolites, the abundance of metabolites that are related with the serine biosynthesis pathway, but also with the glucose uh, pathway. And what we saw consistently in two different models of breast cancer is that this, the cells that have low PHDH also have a significant depletion of the metabolite fructose bisphosphate. And this was actually quite interesting because this metabolite is not the... Uh, precursor of the, 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 let's say, the, the source of the reaction or the product of the rea reaction is actually quite upstream of PHDH is here in this part. So what we hypothesize that then it, it would, what it could be is for some reason, the loss of PHDH was uh, making the enzyme that produced FBP be more, less active. So the enzyme PFK could be less active, and is why we, we have less uh, fructose bisphosphate. To, so to understand if this was the case, what we did is we used an, an a approach that is called uh, 13C tracing uh, an, labeling analysis, that what we do is we use 
use metabolites that are uh, labeled in, in the different carbons. So because they are labeled, we can measure them uh, with mass spectrometry and we can follow them how the cells metabolize these uh, nutrients in different in the metabolites downstream. So for example, here what we did is we use glucose labeled in these 13 C carbons and we measure the, um, the amount of fructose bisphosphate that the cells generate. But the way that we did it is we did it in a dynamic um, way. What, that's, what this means is that we measure the incorporation of these carbons, these labeled carbon of glucose into the fructose bisphosphate over time. So like this, we can see how fast cells incorporate these carbons. And what you can see is that when cells uh, lose PHDH, they incorporate less carbons of the glucose into the fructose bis bisphosphate compared to the control. So this indeed was telling us that this enzyme was less active. But then where are the carbons of the glucose going? So we hypothesize that this should be some side pathways or branching pathways that are then more active in these low PHDH cells. So doing again this dynamic setting tracing analysis, checking for other pathways, we actually could see that there is one branch pathway that comes from this uh, before this PSK um, enzyme that is called exosamine or sialic acid pathway. That when we do when we did the dynamic labeling, we could see that all the products of the pathway were actually fast, faster uh, generated from glucose in the low PHDA cells compared to the control cells. So it was telling us that indeed because of the loss of PHDH, the carbons from glucose are being diverted into this uh, side pathway that is the sialic acid pathway. But is this important for, for the metastasis initiation of these cells? What could be the, the, the mechanism that why this can give, have, give an advantage to the cells for metastasis? So we first wanted to validate if indeed this pathway could be important. So we decided to silence or to block one of the enzymes of the pathways, enzymes that is called CMAS. And what we could see in the, in, in the, when we inject these tumors that have low PHDH, we could see again that they have more metastasis. But if we, on top of that, we block CMAS, we could see that we um, abrogate this effect of PHDH uh, in cells. So can't, this, this primary tumors were, able, were no longer able to produce this uh, high amount of metastasis anymore. But why? What is, why is, is this pathway as, uh, an advantage for metastasis? Well, actually, the product of this pathway, the CMP sialic acid, is a substrate for a post-translational modification that is called protein deylation. This is a type of glycosylation. So we, we hypothesize that they, they should be, it, it should be a target, a protein that is more deylated in this condition that is giving an advantage for the cells to metastasize. So there, there are many, many targets in, in the cells that can be deylated. So in order to find uh, which one was important in our mechanism, we took a step back. And what we did is we analyzed the pathways that are more active, in general, the transcriptional pathways that are more active when PHDH is lost, in order to look for the upstream regulator that could be deylated. And when we did this analysis, what we did is we combined um, a couple of uh, omics uh, data sets comparing low PHDH and high PHDH cells. And what we saw among the pathways that were more upregulated in these low PHDH cells, we saw a lot of um, epithelial transition, uh, extracellular matrix collagen activated pathways, which makes sense with a more invasive phenotype. We also saw glycosylation. But there were also a lot of integrin pathways popping up, integrin pathways that were more active in these low PHD cells. And this was very interesting because actually integrins are a, a very common target for this protein deylation. So we did a screen uh, with different integrins. And interestingly, we found one of them, integrin alpha V beta 3, that was much, much more glycosylated or deylated when we uh, block PHDH compared to the control. And interestingly, when we, uh, on top of that, we block CMAS, we could see that this uh, deylation uh, decreases. Then later we validated actually that when we block this integrin uh, beta-3, we could also um, decrease the, the 
in migration and invasion capacity of these cells, as we can see here measuring by this staining. So indeed, the loss of PGDA promotes the invasion via this integrin uh, activation. Ah, sorry. So to, to summarize what are the, the main uh, findings of this is um, that this is an, an another example of the importance of understanding the metabolic plasticity and metabolic heterogeneity of primary tumors, because in this case can actually determine which cells can initiate metastasis. And what we see is that cells that actually have low PHDH in the primary tumor are able to divert carbons from glucose in this sialic acid pathways to produce this uh, product, the CMP sialic acid that is used for protein sialation. And specifically, we see that this integrin alpha beta V3 is one target of this protein sialation and is the one that activates this uh, mig migratory capacity of these cells. So it, this, is, this actually has uh, important implications for patients because previous research has already shown that high levels of PHDH can help cancer cells to proliferate in the primary tumor, locally in the primary tumor. But this is the first time that anyone describes an important effect of how PHDH levels influence the ability of the cells to leave the primary tumor. And we could think in, uh, if, if in the clinics, if you, you are able to measure, if you, for example, after a biopsy in a, in a breast cancer patient or after a removal of a breast tumor, if you can do a staining for a PHDH, for example, you can see if it's more or less heterogeneous, you could actually kind of have a, a prediction if this patient will have more risk of metastasis or less. So I think this is this the take home message here that I would like to transmit to this is that it's very important that we continue investigating on how um, metabolic plasticity, but also in general tumor heterogeneity can impact the aggressiveness of, of different cancer types. And with this, I would like to end, uh, of course, thanking all the people involved in this project and all the collaborators, you for your attention, and I will be happy to take any questions. Thank you very much, Patricia, for a fantastic talk. Congratulations for all the work. And now, as you said, it's time for questions. Uh, if maybe I can, I think Adria wants to, wants to ask something. Yes. Uh, thank you, Patricia. Very nice work. Uh, I'm so, sorry because uh, this may be obvious. But what is the effect of this serialization on the on the integrin? Does it lead to more expression of the integrin, or mm -hmm. it works? Different? But I, yeah, I didn't I didn't explain that. What it does is activate the the, the signaling of the integrin. So mm -hmm. being serialized, it can be more accessible in the membrane. So the integrin goes to the membrane and activate the, the signaling pathway that this integrin has. So we describe in the paper because this integrin is, is related to a lot of metalloproteases, uh -huh. um, also like extracellular matrix remodeling. So the, the, this, all these pathways are more active when it's more CI related. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Thank you. And sorry, uh, and are these in, in your case, are these migratory cells yeah, yeah. Uh, losing epithelial markers? Are they doing EMT or yes? So what we yeah, we check that and what we see is that these low PHDH cells actually increase the epithelial, so they, they increase the all the EMT markers, the, the typical EMT markers. Yeah. How I, what we don't know actually is what comes first is because of the loss of loss of PGDH, these epithelial markers go, or because these cells start in a more EMT, uh -huh. then they, this we don't know. But yes, it, it, for sure there is a correlation. Uh -huh. uh, Juan also wants to ask a question. Hi, <laughs> congratulations, awesome work. Uh, one very maybe stupid question. Do you? Uh, happen to know what regulates this PHDH expression? So why cells decide to lower it? Yes, so we know part of it. We don't know everything. So what we have observed is that uh, the cells that are more in a more proximity to the blood uh, vessel are the ones that lose the PHDH expression. And then what we when we observe that, we test is actually the the there was a cross talk with the notelial cells. So we did co-culture with the notelial cells. And then we saw that indeed in notelial cells, it, it, in vitro, low the expression of PHDH. 
So this is what we know in, uh, and we publish in this paper. But now uh, from this uh, work, there is a, a PhD student of the lab that is trying to find out what is the, this crosstalk or what is the, the, and actually what we know so far is that there is something that the endothelial cells secrete because just by the fact of adding the media of the endothelial cells and without being the endothelial cells uh, in close contact, the, the cancer cells can lose PHCDH already. But okay. we don't know more. We are now investigating. <laughs> but again, 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 endothelial cells, because I remember last time that I talked to you, you told me about uh, the endothelial cells in the lung. Yeah. So, yeah, they have an important role here as well. Yeah, because <laughs> we described a couple of years ago that uh, notch activation in endothelial cells promote metastasis. So maybe there's something related to that. Yes, yes, but indeed. We have looked into that. If, if you think I could help, I'm, I'm open for anything. <laughs> but, but, yeah, probably I will contact you. I mean, it's not my project anymore. Now it's a PhD student, but uh, I will I will tell her. We, we actually talk about your study once, so I will I will tell her again if she wants to contact. Cool. Congratulations again. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I also have a question because I think you talk about some models of metastasis and there are some metastases that are more aggressive than others. Have you also checked, for example, I don't know, in brain metastasis or something that are more refractory to treatment? So we we so in terms of organs of metastasis, uh, no, we have only checked lung uh, in this with this model, but in terms of primary tumors that are uh, also metastasized into the lung, we have checked melanoma. So in melanoma models, we also see uh, that indeed uh, they lose PhDH expression because of the contact with the endothelial cells. And also we see that uh, having uh, low heterogeneity or low PhDH expression in melanoma also increases the migration and the, the metastasis. But brain, we never check. Okay. Yeah, and also going to the same line, have you also maybe checked, probably you mentioned like, I don't know, tissue infiltration on the contacts with PhDH1 or the amount of married cells this this would be super cool to check it but so far we have not uh, go yet but there but it, because now with this new project with the endothelial cells actually the the, the phd student is also going uh, into look into other cross talk with the with the environment yeah cool that looks like really really interesting and tons of work yes indeed, indeed. <laughs> cool so i think i don't see any further questions i would like to Say thank you both to our fantastic speakers, Adrián, Patricia, and thank you very much for joining today in this cancer seminar about metastasis. Congratulations again for your work and for a very interesting discussion. Thank you.